Welcome to Sodi season. What's up, everyone? It's Schmitty, Talking Schmidt, the podcast that you uh, hopefully have been subscribed to and hit the uh, five star review on so I can climb up the charts. Anyhow, today we got a real good one for you. It's Riley Hawk on the program. Before we get to him, I'm out jogging, by the way. I gotta get rid of this gut. Holiday season, you know? But not only is it holiday season, but it's Sodi season. I'm saying they're gonna announce it as soon as tomorrow, as late as next Wednesday. That's the window. And uh, it's anyone's guess who it's gonna be. I don't know who's gonna win. Y'all know I've been going with T-Funk since 2021. So that's who I got. I'm sticking with it. Now, I just want to give a big special shout out. Happy birthday shout out, actually, to the one and only Antonius Toad Dincho, who happens to have the same birthday as today's guest. Riley Hawk. I think that that's Schmidting. My good friend out in New York, Shane Mednich, has composed this special happy birthday song for the both of you. I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Head on down to your local shop. Ask Nordwizard Skateboards. Or visit Nordwizard.com. Hey, what's up? This is Riley Hawk. You're listening to Talkin' Schmidt. Holy cannoli. It's cool. Like, tonight is the night. <laughs> yeah. All big dogs in. Do we really want to be here? Oh, everything changed. We on? Schmidt. Talkin' Schmidt. Talkin' Schmidt, dude. <laughs> you gonna come out different. <laughs> shit my pants, lad. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. Holy shit. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy? Thinks he's tough shit. What's up? Come on, Schmitty. What the fuck? Tell the skateboard police to come get me. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yeah! Okay, we're going to do it like this because I was scrolling through my calendar and I'm looking at Tuesdays and all of a sudden this guy's birthday pops up and I'm like, hey, put two and two together. Let's interview him and have it come out on his birthday. We're recording it today, but we are releasing it December 6th. This is Riley Hawk, kids. Happy birthday, Riley. Thank you. <laughs> first to tell it to you. Yeah, you're definitely the first to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? That part you guys just put out was fucking epic. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it was really fun to film and skate with Figgy a bunch again. It was like back in the day, kind of. It was really fun. Who picked the song? Uh, I picked the song. I sent it. I sent a couple to Andrew, and that one is the one that we both kind of liked a lot. So, I mean, it's definitely like a played out song, but sometimes I like when people use those type of kind of played out like classic songs. You, you familiar with Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that opening scene where Phoebe's open, I mean, like that's yeah. that that brings you right in. So it's oh, such totally. a good for the skate, the intro to to you, like. It just brings up, you're like, oh, you're still Sick, yeah, I mean, to my knowledge, I don't think anyone used it. Maybe they had, but I was like, whatever, I'm just using it. No, I thought it was great. And like, 
I don't know. My favorite dudes in life are pretty much like Figgy, Baca, Nuge, Spanky. They're all in there with you, and it's yeah, just like, I was so hyped that they all kind of like were down to pitch some stuff in, and yeah, the Baker team seemed like it's just had a good kind of crew and vibe going this last couple of years and everyone's just hyped whenever someone's putting something out and they all kind of show up for the team it's cool what uh tell me a little bit about this kid lyric because I, I don't know anything about him lyric uh i don't know him super well but he's from my area he's from vista actually like from san diego and mm-hmm. i would always see him around and just see him at the skate park and he's just ripping like he's he's really good he's definitely very uh tech skater like when he wants to be he's He's got it all for sure. I don't know. I I haven't hung with him much, but he's just like a sick little skate shop Vista kid from San Diego, like the House of Vista, the homies that own that skate shop kind of hooked him up from the beginning. And yeah, he's kind of got like kind of like a Rowan thing. They're both from the same neighborhood, just like little San Diego skater. Sick. Dude, speaking of Vista, my favorite Thai restaurant is in Vista. Oh, really? Where at? I think it's called Taiwan on Taiwan on. I don't think I've been, I don't honestly eat out too much, but I could definitely look for a good Thai place. So it's good to know. We went there for Lizzie's birthday. She, it was her spot. She took me oh, there. Sick. super good. Yeah. Right. Um, what was the hardest trick? What took you the longest? What gave you the most slams? What was the hardest thing that you finally got for that video part? Uh, I'm trying to think. Definitely one of the gnarliest missions was skating that that uh, spot in New York, that big ledge in the marble bank that apparently all those guys got arrested at or whatever. I don't know. I didn't know it was that kind of crazy of a situation, but me and my homies woke up super early at like 5.30. We got there by like 6.30 and I was like trying to front side flip into it at like 7 a.m and then did it within maybe like 30 minutes or so. And once I made it, I was just like, let's just get the fuck out of here. And as we were kind of leaving, we were seeing people like kind of like starting to show up that clean up the park and stuff. So I think we just, I don't know, we just got lucky, but that spot's brutal to get to. You gotta like hike around this little rock around this fence on the water and it's a whole mission, but it's worth it. That spot's so cool. Rad, yeah. Uh, Figgy said to ask you true or false you were doing jiu-jitsu every morning leading up to that uh, kinker rail. <laughs> Wait, which one? The one, that I think the second, th- the last one maybe, the, the kinker uh, rail? I think I trained a couple times when I was out there in Austin, but yeah, I mean, those dudes were just like partying. It was South by Southwest, so everyone was just partying <laughs> so hard and like I wasn't really partying and everyone would be pretty slow in the mornings. So I would get up kind of early and there's like so many good gyms out there to train at. So I would train a couple times, but I didn't do it too much. It's pretty brutal to do both in one day. It's kind of takes a lot on the body. So talk about that a little bit. Like when did you get into it? How did you just dive into that? Like I, this is uh, sort of new, right? My buddy, Chris, who is a skater, he trained for a while and he would always tell me like to try it. And he was pretty good. He got up to purple belt. He doesn't really train that much anymore, but me and him actually like he was one of the guys that helped us start our coffee shop so we spent a lot of mornings just me and him in the coffee shop just kind of like shooting the shit and he would just explain what it is to me and uh i don't know i always i wanted to try it and then kind of had a goal in 2022 to like just get healthier and i was trying to kick booze in a lot and just kind of trying to get in a better space mentally and physically and then i had a friend who told me about the gym that i go to now And he was just, I just didn't, it just seemed intimidating to just go to a gym and just walk in and I don't know, like, it's just kind of a weird, weird way to, it's like going to the skate park for the first time or something. I don't know. It's, it's like, you don't know anyone. It's kind of awkward. You don't know what you're doing, but, uh, the gym was really cool and the people were awesome. Like the community and the vibe was way, way more epic than I expected it to be. Everyone was just like super rad and yeah, and then I just started going, and that was that, and just been doing it ever since. In the beginning, you're just getting the shit kicked out of you, kind of, right? Pretty much, like- yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess to, like, skaters' defense, we're pretty used to getting beat up and, like, the physical abuse, but it's definitely a different kind, and, and the, the like, cardio it takes to do it is pretty brutal. I had to, like, definitely made me realize how out of shape I really was. 
but yeah, it's just, it's fun. It's, and my buddy would explain it to me. He's like, he's like, it's just like skating. And I just didn't understand how, what he was saying or how it was possible. But once I started getting into it, it totally, it's like exactly the same, just the, just the way you learn new things and the way you're moving your body. And it's, it feels like when you're a kid kind of going to the skate park for the first few times and just getting hooked on it. But yeah, has it was it, fun. Has it helped you with your skiing or is it like, I think you- it's definitely just helped me be in better shape and just, just stronger, like just physically stronger. And just, I think when you're getting kind of abused like that day in and day out, like your body's just naturally conditioned for, for more stuff. So it, when you're skating, it feels kind of, you're just ready, I guess. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I seen like Chris Russell, a few people have kind of gotten into that. And, yeah. Uh, me and Chris kind of, he started training before me and then we've trained a handful of times for sure. But we always are like sending each other videos and fucking trying to like learn from each other. Sometimes like we've been talking about getting together and just drilling a bunch of stuff all day and just like learning. Cause that's kind of how you learn, you know? So it's, sure. yeah, he's, he's a beast though. I mean, he's, he rolls just like he skates. He's just a fucking powerhouse, <laughs> just like tank coming at you. Fuck. How much of your life does that consume? Are you, are you pretty much training like pretty, pretty yeah, regularly? Yeah, I train like five, five days a week, sometimes two classes a day. Just right. like I do it a lot and it's, it's not as time consuming or like grueling as it may seem at the beginning. Once you kind of get in the habit of it, it's just like a part of my my week routine now, but it's awesome. It's like, I, I feel like it was something that transitioned so well from like when you're kind of, you know, not in your most prime skating abilities anymore. And you still need that kind of physical and like exertion and like kind of technical, like learning aspect of it. It's like starting from scratch and it's like this whole new exciting thing. So it's really fun. I think you're the type of guy that when you want to do something, you dive all in, like with skating, with music, with jujitsu. I think you're, you're not going to do it like half ass. You're going for it if you're going for it, right? Yeah. I mean, I was like, fuck, I was just like, let's just see what it's like to just get, just beat the hell up every day. The, <laughs> my, my coach of one day was just like, dude, are you fucking sore yet? And I was like, yeah, I'm dead right now. But I just <laughs> kept going and just like. And then it just started clicking out of nowhere, maybe like six or seven months in, it just kind of like things started making sense. I wasn't just getting, you know, abused as a body bag for everyone. Right. Huh. Well, that's good. A lot of skaters do it. I know a couple of buddies that do it. So it's cool. We have a little crew that does it. Right. Yeah. I mean, up here, a lot of the skiers are getting into surfing. Yeah. I think it's almost a similar mentality where you just want to get your ass beat a little bit when you can't is a good way to get some shit out of you. you know? That's just how skaters do it. Cause we're just so used to it being so hard in skating that like, we need that, that like unattainable goal almost to just go after mm-hmm. and just keep chasing it. Um, I want to talk about some early stuff. Cause, uh, first of all, a lot of people don't know your real name is Hudson. Yeah. How early did you lose that and become Riley? I was just always Riley when I, my parents just called me that. I mean, I don't know what their exact reasoning was, but there's like, allegedly, there's like this movie called Hudson Hawk that oh, yeah. came out a little bit before, yeah, with Bruce Willis before I was born. And I think people just thought I was named after it and my parents didn't like it or I don't know. Yeah, it was just Riley was just like it for some reason. Okay, that makes sense. So they were like, they named it to you, but then they kind of, started calling you Riley you didn't go like dude I'm not Hudson. no 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 I like I never they never called me Hudson ever uh, okay yeah um and then let's talk about the Shep dogs I want to I want to know like who you met first how it all began where the name came from the whole deal because I mean this is an epic story like all you guys have kind of blossomed and and you're still friends but like mm-hmm. you, you got like four or five guys that have their name on the bottom of their boards now yeah, I know. It's crazy to think about, actually. But um, it was me and Jacob met first who filmed it all. I mean, I'm sure you know Jacob. Yeah. Um, we actually live together here at this house. But he, we met in, like, third or fourth grade, maybe. And he was just, like, the only other kid at, with a skateboard at our school. And we would just both skate after school and just became buddies. And then um, after that, it was, like, Kirby was kind of the next dude that we would skate with a lot. 
I don't know exactly how we met. I think through skating, like, the castle contest or something. <clears throat> oh, okay. And then um, I'm trying to think of who. And then, like, AJ I knew really well from just skating the local skate parks. And uh, him and Steven were both, like, kind of Encinitas kids that were really good, and we kind of started skating with all the time. And then, I mean, T-Spliff, Taylor Smith, he was, like, he was already, like, pretty much pro at 13. <laughs> and... <laughs> he just kind of like changed i don't know i think he just changed up the way he approached skating at like 15 or so and that's kind of when he was like filming the video parts for the videos that we made and they were just unbelievable like he was the best like no one it was like i've never seen anyone skate like that dude when we'd go out and film like it was just so effortless it was kind of crazy to watch but yeah uh, him and then yeah like rowan like we we all just skated this really shitty skate park in Carlsbad and it had lights and it was like the only park at the time and Rowan would skate there we were like damn Rowan's good like this he was just good as a little kid and then we would like go street skate and take him with us and his mom thought he was at the skate park the whole time because she didn't know he would like go out and street skate but then I guess he got busted one time because they got like a ticket skating a school or something and he had to like explain to his mom what was going on and then yeah it was kind of one of those situations but and then yeah that was kind of like the crew and then like his buddy who's now like one of my good friends Nick Pope he was like a Vista kid that they grew up skating and yeah it was just kind of just whoever wanted to go skate really just kind of ended up in those in those videos huh okay where how did you guys become chef dogs uh, that was actually from Troy Rhodes, who's like Lanny and JT's younger brother. Yeah. It was like, we were like spray painting like stencils on the wall in my room. Like my mom was just like, whatever. She just didn't care. She was just letting us be little skate kids and not, not really care about what we were doing. And we were like putting stencils on the wall or something. And he was kind of into tagging. And I think he like, he went to write like shred dogs or something and like just totally fucked it up and misspelt it and it said shep dogs and we were like what the hell dude that's on the wall that's like on my wall now in my room and it was huge it was like this big mural thing and then we were like fuck it was just like kind of like a joke thing you know like all right shep dogs like that's the crew i guess it just kind of turned into yeah a joke that turned into a whole like series of skate videos i guess pretty that's funny like- Frank doing the tattoo on Richie and spelling skate and destroy wrong. Yeah, exactly. Just like dumb <laughs> shit. Yeah, but like Troy too. He was one of the OG dudes that I started skating with like back in the day because he was just a kid that skated. It was kind of, you didn't really find kids my age back then that were skating, like trying to like get after it and street skate like that, you know? And mm. Lanny and all them were already so far beyond like our level. They were already filming videos and stuff when we were, I mean, in like sixth grade so mm-hmm. man the roads are such a crew huh they got a good sized family and they're all yeah. like similar age so they just come out and do it yeah and they kind of had their own crew you know and like we were kind of like just trying to be like them like have a crew of dudes that we like film skate videos and yeah it was just so different back then when you didn't have you know the internet really it was you had to really just like look up to your local local skate scene mm. Yeah, I was thinking, I'm pretty sure the first time I met you was on a a skate park roundup and you were on Birdhouse still. And Mm -hmm. uh, I filmed Jake and you kind of interviewing each other, like talking. And we had a full day. But uh, the funny thing about that day was that um, it's the infamous day in my life where I drove through a puddle on the way to the airport and the car broke down because it flooded the, you know, the radiator or whatever. Mm -hmm. And somehow magically uh tow truck drove up behind us put the car on the tow truck it drove us to the airport wow and we just made the flight and we got there and we had that epic day where jaws jumped off the vert ramp and yep, yep. we skated with your dad and everybody and it was so fun like just seeing jake on the deck and and yelling out tricks and tony doing them and yeah i we could have missed that day and that day would have so that was the first day i met you though that's cool yeah it seemed like it seemed like Jake was in like a good mood that day. He was just hyped up. It was fun to do that little skate park thing. That was a cool thing, the skate park roundup. Yeah, we had fun because it was just like sometimes we would fly down for the day. Sometimes we would fly down for two or three days. But it was just yeah. like 
whatever happens in that day, that's it. It's not totally. like, you know, and so, but, um, curious, you probably told this story a bunch of times, but I had, I had to get in your mind as far as going from birdhouse to Baker. Like, mm. was there lots of discussions with your dad? Was there like premeditation? Like, I love what these guys are doing. I want to do it, but I'm kind of ner- like, what was the vibe there? Um, I mean, I was just at that point, just skating a lot and kind of working on video parts and kind of like more like transitioning into a part of my life where I was like just more interested in things that I guess maybe you would think the Baker guys are more inclined to like be into like the music kind of the the clothes they're wearing just all that stuff and I wasn't like I never thought like oh I'm gonna try and get on Baker it was just like slash slash kept texting me just said Baker like he would just text me and just say Baker and you know how slash is it was I was like what the hell and I was just didn't understand what he was trying to get at like maybe I thought he's saying I should try to get on Baker or something I didn't understand but and then then I think Andrew called me and just talked to me for a little bit about it and obviously it just seemed like it made sense at that point I mean like if Andrew calls you to bride for Baker, you kind of just, you do it. That's like one of those unspoken things, I guess. And uh, so I talked to my dad and we just had a conversation about it and he understood. And, and honestly it was, he kind of explained, he just said, you know, if it's going to be beneficial for you is like your skating and your skate career. If that's what you want to like go down that path, then you should definitely do it but don't just do it just because, you know, you want to ride a Baker board and maybe you won't get on the team. You know what I mean? He was just wanting to, he was looking out for me because you see that happen time and time again with guys leaving for the cooler brand or whatever they think it is. And they end up in this flow purgatory and then kind of just things don't work out, I guess. But yeah, I guess I just, it just worked out for me. I was just so skate dedicated that like at that point in my life, I wasn't drinking I didn't even care about any of that. I was just, just skate. And so when I'd go on those trips, I think it kind of shined through just because at that point, a lot of those guys were still partying and I was just like, let's go to the next spot, next spot. Like I just wanted to skate. And that was kind of where that bacon destroyed part came from was just those trips, just like skating, just nonstop. And it's pretty sick. Like uh, your dad had Andrew on birdhouse when he was younger. Yeah. I think Andrew might have Tony Hawk tattooed on him somewhere. I think he has the skull somewhere, yeah. And so, like, that just kind of connection, like... Yeah, kinda, it made sense. It, was, it wasn't... It was There's respect. It's not yeah, like, a, like no, I'm going like, to steal him or whatever. Yeah, and there was no kind of bad feelings or anyone, like, upset with each other. And it just, it just seemed like at that point, I was like that was maybe something I had thought about like skating for another board brand, but I wasn't going to like go seeking one out. And so right. when Baker came to me, I just was like, yep, that's, that's about as good as I could ever hope for. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely like extremely stoked to skate a Baker board and still skating one. So. I mean, it's gotta be one of the best teams in skateboarding. It's just such a family and rad dudes. Everybody's a stand up dude. And like, yeah. Whether they're partying or they're not, they're, they can still hang out. Like, I always thought yeah. that was cool that, like, the sober guys can hang out with the party guys, you know? Totally. And I'm a pretty, like, quiet, like, reserved person, especially back in those days. So I would just sit in the van and just, like, just listen, just Eat wait up the, the next stories. spot, uh. just skate. But, yeah, I remember when I got that first package of just, like, the Baker block letter boards, I was just like, wow, I, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm actually, like, skating these boards, you know? And I think I was like kind of in that flow stage for a little bit. And then, uh, and then I think I had like an ad or something like that. What's the best part about Baker? Like, do you get to film with Beagle much? Uh, when you go on uh, trips, who do you room with or like sit in the van next to like most often or is Um, it random? Early on, I was filming probably with Beagle a bit more because we were going on trips and they were trying to kind of throw me in the mix and just see how how I did with everyone, I guess, kind of like people do with the new guy. And uh, yeah, I don't remember who, 
who I was sitting next to. I remember we did one Baker trip. And I sat next to Dustin for like 24 days. And <laughs> it was pretty, pretty entertaining. He's yeah. definitely like, yeah, I mean, he just like, <laughs> you know how he is. He likes to get a rise out of people. And I usually uh, yeah. don't like get, give it to him or I'm pretty just nonchalant. Like I don't care about if he's fucking with me. And so he kind of would leave me alone, but yeah, he likes to torment people, but he's, he's funny. He's like awesome. He's exactly how I hoped he would be when I got on Breaker. You know, he's the man. And I sat next to him on a trip and learned a lot from him just about life and everything. And yeah, that was kind of the only like long Baker tour I've been on. It was, I forget when it was, but I was hurt the whole time. So I was just like, just chilling, kind of drinking, doing whatever, everyone just like going with the flow. Mm. Uh, let's talk about skate rock. Cause you went on the skate rock from uh, Detroit to new Orleans, right? Yep. Uh, what was your thoughts on that? Like uh, seeing these guys play uh, shows at night and then skate in the day and then move to the next town. Like it seemed like maybe I could be wrong, but am, did that kind of spark a little bit for you to want to be in a band or were you already in a band thinking uh, about it or what? No, I don't think I was even, I don't think that was on my radar at that point, like being in a band, but definitely it was cool to just see those dudes just kind of like not really take it so serious and just make it fun. And like every show was just about just the crew, just like, it was almost like the bands were playing for the, the crew we were with just to get everyone fired up and have something to do. And then there was people there that were just partying also. So it was cool. It was fun to see those guys operate like that. And again, I like, as a kind of more quiet reserved person, just seeing like all those guys just unleash on each other every night and just, like getting ran out of towns like i forget where it was it's one that one town that just literally was like picked us out yeah and just so many funny stories from like yeah i remember that night actually me and frank were sitting in a hotel room like we snuck into a room and uh the cops knocked on the door and they were banging and Frank's like, turn the TV on or something. I don't remember exactly what, but we like, turned it on and it was like Golden Girls was playing and Frank opens the door and like, were you guys at this bar? And it's like, Frank's, you know how he is. He's like, oh no, we're just watching the Golden Girls in here and just like <laughs> open the door. And it's just me and him sitting in it. It was so funny. I He he always brings that up to me whenever I see him. It's a funny, that was uh, a funny night. But that night was crazy. There was a lot of chaos that night. Yeah, that was the night that the guy lost his ring in a fight and then they chased us back to the hotel. Yeah, and I remember just seeing Timo just punching people or getting punched by someone every night. And I was just like, this guy is crazy. It was sick, though. It was fun. It was fun to watch. I remember when he got him and I think Austin got beat up at that house party and they tried to kick him out. And they were just they just stood their ground after they got beat up. They're like, nope, we're not leaving. We just stayed. <laughs> just kept partying. I was like, this is insane. Uh, did you ever go back to St. Louis? Mm, oh, to try that kickflip? Yeah. No, I never did, actually. That was gnarly. You got thrown in the police car cuffed, right? Yeah, I was so sweaty, too, and just gross. That sucked. I couldn't even, like, wipe my face off. I remember just getting sweat just pouring down. But I think I think I did an ollie into it, and then I was trying the kickflip. But I just remember we got kicked out, and then Joe was, like, pretty much said, like, it would be a cover if I went back and tried the, and made the kickflip. So I was just like, all right. I don't give a shit. Let's go back. We went yeah. back, and it was like it was like Rowley was filming, I think. Uh -huh. And then yeah, the cop just came up so hot and just right on the curb. Yeah, that was funny. Random. Uh, that spot was like, I don't know. It didn't seem like a kind of spot you should someone would care that much about. I know it was off radar. Yeah, yeah. like I, I, don't, I didn't understand that. What was your favorite part of the whole trip? You think the skate rock? Yeah. Like Herman's uh, Hole stands out always to me because we had to like cross the river and shit. Like that was pretty weird. I don't even. Which one was that? I don't even remember that part. That was the one at night, and it's a bowl, and there was fireworks going off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. You had to you kind had to of cross drive. a river. Oh yeah, we yeah. had to drive through a river, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. That was sick. That one was super sick. Um, yeah, that one, and I'm trying to think. 
just that one photo where like I think Rainey's going over someone frontside slashing and like Jake's oh, right there and they're playing. Andy Roy, yeah. Watching that. Oh yeah, Andy. And uh I, f- I forget who else. I remember that day we were when we were sitting at that bowl, like I didn't really drink much at that time and I remember I was like drinking a bit on that trip. And I think Julian like offered me a beer and I was just like, Oh no, I'm trying to like kind of chill out on the drinking and then he was like he's like i hadn't even seen you drink the whole trip but like it's like you can just say you don't want to drink or something and i was just like all right i guess that's kind of what i'm saying i don't want to drink but it was funny <laughs> oh man uh nude said to ask you about an airport ride in detroit that uh with the skate park uh or the car rental oh yeah that was on skate rock yeah yeah we were like it was the last night and we just fucking our car or our alarm didn't go off or something and i had a flight to another skate trip and i already missed one flight and so i was just kind of in my head i was like god this is fucked like i'm i'm definitely not just gonna even go on that trip but i just woke up and i was just like i'm fucking going to the airport whoever wants to go and everyone got up and uh frex just was like he was not moving couldn't get him up (laughs) And Frex was just a body in the hotel room. And I was like, dude, I'm go like, I got to go to the airport. Like we tried to get him up and he just wouldn't wake up. So I was like, oh, whatever, I'm going, you guys can stay. And they were all, they all wanted to go. Obviously everyone wanted to leave. And so I, we just drove the minivan. I just drove it like 120 miles per hour. Our flight was like, we, from waking up to flight was like an hour, I think till takeoff. Oh. And I just fucking pulled the rental up to the the drop off, and just saw like a kiosk person. I was like, "We have ten minutes to get on our flight. This is our rental car. Here's the keys. Like, this isn't. We're just going." And they're just like, "Okay." And then somehow we got on the flight. I don't even know how. Damn. They always talk about that though, but I don't. I mean, it seemed crazy, but it didn't seem that crazy to me. I just got in the car and just started driving as fast as I could. I just didn't give a shit. I was like, whatever, if we get pulled over, fuck it. And Frex is still in that hotel, I think. (laughs) Yeah, still in fucking (laughs) Detroit somewhere. (laughs) Shit. Uh, So when did you kind of start taking the music thing seriously? Was uh, Pather the first, how do you pronounce it? Just Peter, yeah. Peter. Peter, yeah. Was that the first band? uh yeah that was kind of like the first band i was in with my buddies i guess we just i don't know i guess i never took it i didn't really ever take it too seriously it just was something that was fun and yeah i think people thought we took it more seriously than we did and Mm. so we were always kind of a mess on the road because those guys wanted to be motley crew and so we were just (laughs) yeah it was just like they were just partying nonstop, and i was trying to kind of keep the ship afloat i guess and it was fun though i mean definitely learned some lessons just traveling the road with your friends like in a music environment versus a skate one but Mm. i always kind of didn't like it because i i don't i wanted to be like out in the day and like skating and doing stuff like i'm in all these cities with all these epic spots and i'm just sitting in a dark bar looking at gear on a stage while some dude's like hitting his kick drum getting the sound going you know and Mm. it was fun but it just yeah it was that lifestyle was just not for me it was just unhealthy for my brain for sure right yeah i was talking to figgy about it and uh he was kind of echoing that where it's like on a skate trip you're down to skate and all that stuff um but on a band trip it's pretty much really hard not to party it's just such a party atmosphere yeah and you you know you drink to get through all the bullshit and then you just wake up and do it again. And yeah, it, it maybe I could do it now if I, depending on like the crew I was with or something, but it just wasn't something that seemed like I, something I wanted to do long term. Like it was just fun and people offered us these shows and tours. And so we did it, but now I'm kind of at the point where I just, I don't want to sit in a bar for six hours a night, every night, just not, what I'm trying to do. I feel that. Uh, but you you were in another band, Warish, right? Yep. 
So you're not playing music at all anymore? I mean, we still do it. And like, we have some songs that we've worked on and I guess they just would say it's not at the top of the priority list to kind of pursue putting that band into the public eye. But, you know, if the right shows come along or if someone asks to do a tour and it seemed fun, I would do it. But yeah, I just don't really care too much to put myself out there like that. It's just not not what I'm trying to do. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I think making the music is fucking sick. And yeah, like, I love that it's part. It's super cool because it's the whole creative thing. Yeah. But then it's kind of like a must. You kind of have to tour if that's your gig, like if yeah. you're doing that stuff. And that part is kind of, I, I get that. Um, well, I I did a couple of questions on the Instagram and this kid sir, social pariah said that you said in an interview that you don't put your boards together. Does someone put your boards together for you? <laughs> really? No, I definitely put all my boards together. I wish someone did. That's what I said. I was like, there's no way. He's like, yeah, he said him and his dad, they have somebody put their boards. Together. I was like, no fucking way. There's nobody no way. has. <laughs> Nobody has to be set up their board. I don't even it. like, I wouldn't be even set want up right. in, in reality, I wouldn't want someone to put my board together just because I'm kind of like, you get kind of yeah. superstitious about the way it's, I don't know. But no, I'm sure. The I've had homies like set up a board for me real quick if I break it at a spot and we're like getting kicked out. Like if there's a situation like that, I'll, someone will, you know, NASCAR it for me real quick while I'm like pulling my trucks off while they are also or something. But mm. yeah, I don't, I, don't have anyone on on call that sets up my boards. <laughs> hey, T Spliff, get over here. Yeah. Uh, what's your relationship with vert skating? Um, are you are you skating vert at all these days? Uh, I try to a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like trying to be a vert skater, but yeah. it's fun, and I really like the. Uh, I don't know. I like the idea of getting better at vert and, you know, learning just the basics, all the inverts and airs and just having fun on a vert ramp versus being terrified of it. But that's kind what, of where I'm at with it. <laughs> what's your big move? Like, have you done a 540 or anything? On no, that? I thought about it would be like, I would be super stoked if I could do like one McTwist in my life, but yeah. I'm not really on that path at the moment, but just, you know, backside airs, frontside airs, trying to do lip tricks, backsmith, frontsmith, inverts, uh -huh. trying to do like eggplants, stuff like that. You ever cross the channel at the in indoor ramp? I've frontside ollied it, but not like a proper air over it. That thing's big. Yeah, it's it's no joke. That ramp's no joke. <laughs> I know. When you that, see it in person, you're like, shit. That photo of Bucky Lassick, no comply, it's one of my favorite. It's yeah, just he's blasting insane. over that thing. It's like that thing is huge. You yeah. can't run and jump across it. My dad always told me he thinks he thought he's like Bucky is the best vert skater. There I is. think so. Yeah. I think so. He's after seeing him skate the combi a couple of times, I was like Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean front blunt through the corner just on lock. And like, he's not yeah. like in his young prime, like he's still <laughs> ripping, you know yeah he's so uh, it's insane and i feel like he's the kind of guy that's so good that if you told him something he can't do he could just go do it my shit's taken care of i don't yeah it seems like he's just always like on point skating it's crazy mm. um let's talk a little bit about the coffee shop because i've heard wind of it i haven't been down there but uh you guys got a coffee shop uh yeah me and some friends like my buddy shay who yeah skate with and figgy's part of it too and a couple other people um yeah. Where's it at? In Oceanside? It was in Oceanside and we moved it a little bit east. It's like kind of in Vista area now. We just moved it this year. So that was kind of a process, but it's been cool. It's been a learning experience. I mean, I think me and my buddies are way more hands on with it than people probably think. I'm sure people think that, I don't know, we just like wanted a coffee shop and someone came and did it for us. But it's been definitely a pretty like grueling but rewarding process learning about running a small business and just how it all works you know did you guys create your own blend and stuff yeah we roast our own coffee we have a buddy that is a skater who's a really good roaster and he is like kind of roast for us and originally we didn't we use someone else's but we now use our own blends that we roast so and what's the name steel mill right? steel mill yeah 
Yeah, we did a, a giveaway with because um, Blood Wizard did a collab skateboard. Yeah. So we did a cup, uh, whatever, a pound of coffee in the board giveaway like a, a month ago or something. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, dude. Like, what's uh, have you spent time working down there or is it not? Yeah. You, you I know? mean, during the COVID, me and my buddy Shay, we worked like every day for a long time because it was just this like weird uncertain thing and not that many people were coming and so there wasn't that much money to pay employees to be there and so we were working i mean i'll still now and again do shifts if like everyone if everyone's traveling or there's some weird day where someone gets sick or something i'll hop in there and just do a day or two when it when it needs to be done what's it like if you're working in there i mean everybody knows you you've grown up there are people coming in trying to hit you up for free coffee like what's the shit no, is it annoying it's no? super mellow it's it's oh. way more mellow than you would think i, I feel you, you like you don't get like daniel stirred in there going give me coffee i mean he definitely has spent some time in there and he's definitely <laughs> he was in the oceanside one he was coming in quite a bit and there was always some some stir going on when he was there but <laughs> he's so crazy he'd be there like the first guy like six 59 just waiting by the like by the front of the door just for his espresso you know yeah but i wasn't really in the shop that much when he was coming in but yeah people there was people that liked him and didn't like him in there that's for sure what's the vibe is it kind of small and it's just it's small or do you guys have little food things too it's small and it's primarily just coffee like my buddy shay who we started with he his parents owned a shop where he's from in idaho and he grew up like in that shop and worked there his whole life. So he was pretty much coffee, the coffee expert of the, the operation. That was where it kind of all started from, but okay, it's a pretty small space. And, uh, Chris Gregson's fiance, actually, Chriselle, she, yeah. we split the space and she has like her little, like kind of vintage clothing line stuff that's in there and her stuff mm. sells well. And it's a cool little kind of half and half shop now. So, Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah congrats to them they're they're engaged right or do they got married now yeah oh did they i i don't know i I think so i think they went and got married where your dad got married maybe like oh in ireland yeah maybe at a castle or something okay yeah that makes sense (laughs) um yeah (laughs) um what's like one of the things that stands out to you in all of skateboarding that you've been there to see that like blew your mind like one of the gnarliest things you saw happen on a skateboard that you were there for um I don't know. I mean, honestly, kind of probably going back to what you were saying, just watching dudes like Kirby and Rowan and AJ and T Spliff just like become these household favorite skater names, like just from when we were kids, just skating the skate park to now where they're at is just insane. And like I said, I think watching there's this probably like two year period where I just honestly could not believe what T Spliff was doing on his board on like a day to day basis when we would go and street skate and film. I think it was, we were filming the third Shep dogs video. And I just was, I just couldn't believe how good he was. It was like unbelievable. Like it felt like I was watching a Nija type dude, Uh, but it was him just like the most like stoner skate. Carefree. Like it kind of reminds me of Braden Hoban, like watching, I feel like it's a similar, like he's just so, he was so good and he never, he, Nothing took him more than like 10 tries ever. Huh. Do we know what's going on with him currently? I think he's been around SD and I mean, he just had that video part I saw that came out on Thrasher and I think he's skating. I'm not exactly sure what he's up to, but I know he's still skating, just doing whatever he, he's up to. I don't know. He was in SF for a long time and yeah, I didn't even know it. While, yeah. I was, somebody hit me up there like, hit up Taylor's like somewhere. I forget where he was, but I was like, no way yeah yeah he's the best he could he would do stuff even in the city like that people that lived here forever like didn't even look at his spots yeah it was just (laughs) being like i think at that point i was that was like 17 18 19 around that age and it just i just couldn't comprehend how he was skating on that level at when we were that age it was pretty crazy Dude, yeah and so i would say just any t-spliff session during that era was just like the most impressive skating i'd ever seen just 
kickflip into any trick, no every try, no matter what. Right. And then we'd go to, you know, like these rails that were big rails and people had like done grinds and stuff on them and T Swift would just come up and like kickflip board slide it or kickflip back tail it like nothing. And I would just I was mind blown. Oh man. Um have you how many covers have you had? Uh I don't know. I think I've only had one or maybe two, but never a thrasher. I think it was just skateboard mag. Skateboard mag? Yeah. Okay. We got to get you a thrasher cover. <laughs> I think those shoot. days are behind me. I don't know if I got anything <laughs> in the tank left that's worthy of that, but the, the cover, I don't know. You never know. Sometimes it's just the photo too. Yeah, like, totally. But, uh, let's talk a little bit about your year. You started out the year with the, the nepotism part was early on and then you mm -hmm. had the Baker video, like that was yep. about a month or so ago. Uh, you've just been skating a lot. What, what was like the thoughts on the nepotism part? Uh, I was just, like I said, kind of in a spot where I was trying to clean up my act a bit and Is that put the booze down and kind of like get back on track. Like I was just kind of having a rough go through 2020 mentally. And mm. I just knew I was kind of just throwing away like some good years of my life where I could be skating. And then it took some work to get out of that for sure. But mm got out of it and then uh I just wanted to skate like, I just had that like spark of being like a teenage kid again just wanted to skate kind of like I think it's like similar with like you see Spanky kind of had where it was just like once the booze and stuff left the scenario and it's not like I'm not sober but I I just realized my happy like medium with kind of drinking and doing all that stuff so yeah I uh yeah I just wanted to skate and I just hit up my dad and birdhouse at the time wasn't really doing anything and they just had this van sitting there and i was like could i use that for some skate trips and he's like sure it's just sitting there and huh. uh derek actually you know derek from birdhouse yeah yeah he like texts me on one of the trips he's like you still got the van and i was like yeah he's just and he just texts back he's like can you just drive that off a cliff for me like they just it was just the dirtiest like it was the skate the king of the road van it was just like that thing has been through some shit but so right. i just kind of nabbed it and just hit up homies like in the group text and I would just be like, Hey, I'm, I'm taking this thing to Vegas next weekend, whoever wants to go. And like the homies just kept showing up at that morning when we'd leave and just kind of started this little like crew of dudes that were just down to go on these trips and just skate. Like no one was really in a party mode. It was just, people just wanted to skate. And I think it just had that, that infectious energy of like everyone was just hyped on skating. Cause we just wanted to film and it just felt like we were kind of kids again. And it was cool. And then that just happened like just from those trips, that part happened. And then, okay. uh, and then after that, I kind of told Andrew, like, I still have some other footage and I'm down to keep filming. And he just like, well, let's just, you know, just film for a while. And whenever you have a bunch of stuff, like let's just go over it and see if we can make a video or something. And then, yeah, he was just hyped on the footage. So we just ended up, doing that little part and I tried to not like put much emphasis on making it just filmed and then just told Andrew like dude just edit it however you want and put it out I gotta say the feeble of the back tail uh it's like a tribute to Mike Carroll yeah totally yeah exactly. <laughs> dude, that one's sick though you fucking go coast to coast on that one but yeah it was fun I just I just wanted to skate and I kind of thought felt like I wasn't able to skate on the level I wanted to for a while because I was just in a bad mental headspace and kind of just physically destroying my body with just drinking and stuff. And then once I got kind of in a better spot and cleaned up, I realized like, oh, I can still skate how I want to. I just need to just work at it. It's not like some easy thing that just comes like when you're, you know, in your early 20s, you got to put some effort into it for sure. You're like, what are you, 30 now? I'm about to be 30 on this, this whenever this airs, I guess. <laughs> oh, today. Today. Yeah, today 30. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, shit, dude. Uh, was the name nepotism because your dad let you borrow the van? <laughs> I don't know. Started? I think it was just one of those, like, I just knew, you know, everyone always has something to say about me and my dad and the way my skating is 
somehow connected to his or my career or whatever. Like, I don't, I just, it was more just like a little joke, I guess, kind of poking fun at it and just beating people to the punch, I guess. Cause I know that there's always someone saying something. Yeah. I intentionally like wanted to talk to you about you on this interview yeah. and I just have to imagine it's just insane to keep hearing questions about like, I love my dad, <laughs> but, but like, okay, like, th is this about me or my dad? Like, yeah. And, and just like, Hey, this, you know, all those questions. Um, I think this is my only question about your dad. Mo mostly is like, how have you dealt with that? Like, how have you just like not made it into this like evil area, dark area, but also like maintained, like you, you're definitely your own person, which is mm -hmm. so awesome. How has that been? Like, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, okay, this kid grew up and he's like, I'm not skating vert. I'm skating street. Like, but like, was that stuff more natural or was it kind of because like, did your dad kind of turn you off to vert? No, I never felt like I was going against the grain of what okay. he was doing just because I wanted to do something different. I just, I think at that point too, like vert skating was kind of on the way out as I was becoming kind of like my own skater and true. Yeah. I mean, I was just, I was just like a skate kid. Me and my homies would just skate at the basketball court after school, bring a flat mm. bar. Like that was just what we were skating. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it definitely, like you said, like it, for me, it got kind of dark in my mid to later twenties, just trying to understand and deal with all of that and cope with it. And that's like kind of where the drinking comes in. I think it's, you know, the tale as old as time with people just numbing themselves with booze or whatever it is partying or mm. girls or whatever you can do to kind of forget about it and because i've just been i'm like a pretty like quiet and introverted person and mm. i guess you could say maybe like sensitive to some degree so when you see stuff on the internet people just hating and talking shit or what just making fun of you or something it kind of like it starts spiraling into a bad thing and it definitely did for me and i tried my best to regulated in my own head, but you can only take so much, you know, something, uh, I think it was, tr no, not Tracy Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman was quoted as saying, never take criticism from someone you wouldn't ask for advice. Yeah, definitely. So I know I'm not even a, a, a blip on what you've probably received, but just working at Thrasher and especially starting the website and having comments and all that stuff in the YouTube. Yeah. That was really hard on us for making content for free and then seeing people shit all over it. Yeah. I can't even uh, imagine what you're like, blah, blah, blah. Like little kid just saying shit. And you're like, dude, I am reading this. Like it, it, it affects me to some degree. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a person, but, <laughs> and it's kind of sucks. Like, yeah, just existing for some people, like just me existing to them is like a punchline or a joke to just kind of be had. And so mm. this day and age, I don't even really go on the internet much to be honest. So yeah, it's, it's helped a it's lot. Smart. Yeah. W was there anything that you did in the process? Um, Cause I haven't drank in, I think it's coming up on seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, was there anything that you like, you might not have had as much of a problem, but was there something that you did besides obviously staying out of bars and stuff that like helped you? It was jujitsu part of that. Like that kind of came after I was already in kind of getting a little bit of a better headspace, but it definitely helped a lot. Like, right. Super therapeutic, but just doing like a lot of therapy and stuff like that. And mm. kind of trying to talk out some stuff and, you know, open up a little bit. Cause I never did ever. I was just so closed off to that stuff for a long time. I did yeah. some of the, uh, it's called like the ketamine infusion therapy and oh. that helped a lot for sure. Just kind of to get into that space of being willing to talk about stuff and problems. And that was helpful. It was just a combination of just really trying, like just genuinely, I was just at a point where I was just like, I need to just try and put in the effort to make things better because if i don't i'm just going to keep doing the same dumb shit and falling into that same bad habit pattern and 
Yeah. yeah, just so I guess it was just putting in the effort of just really wanting to get into a better spot. And luckily, I was able to kind of jump on that road maybe a little sooner than, you know, someone like my dad did. And we talked a lot about all the stuff that he's gone through and he didn't really get to that point till later in his life. So he was a good person to kind of be a point of contact for when it comes to like dealing with that sort of spotlight on your life can be tricky for sure. Right. Was, uh, were you affected at all by like the pandemic and stuff or is it not that big of a deal down there? You got a lot of space Uh, and stuff, huh? Yeah. San Diego, like wasn't really the most, um, you know, they weren't taking it too seriously. I guess you could say well, they but, had the skate Wednesdays. And was, yeah. We was, up here, we're all looking at that going like, what is going on? Yeah. It was pretty like renegade down here during COVID. Mm. Um, but it was just another excuse to like be like, well, fuck everything's closed. Can't skate. Can't do anything. Fuck it. Just go to the bar. Cause there was bars open down here and oh, wow. there was stuff going on. It was, yeah, I think like, maybe two weeks stuff was closed tops and then pretty much everything just was running under the under the radar trying to be open and make money so you could go do whatever you wanted yeah pretty funny it was it was crazy yeah i would see like Wes kramer and all the homies down there just running amok and yeah, i'm like dude i, I, I mean i'm boy in the i wasn't bubble. doing that for <laughs> sure i was i was definitely not the most conscientious but i wasn't doing like I wasn't rebelling against the, right. the the COVID thing. I was trying to, I didn't want anyone to get sick or die. And I was more so just kind of drinking with my buddies at their house or my house. And, you know, if there was a bar that was like a mellow bar, we'd go there. I wasn't trying to, wasn't trying to go out of my way to just rebel against it. But yeah, it was kind of just how it was here. It was not as serious, I guess you could say. Right. So you said you kind of stay away from the internet. Are you paying attention to what's going on in skateboarding? Like, do you watch video parts? Yeah, I have YouTube, like a YouTube, uh, whatever. Subscription. So, so who's, who's our top contenders for Sodi? I don't know. Actually, I feel like it seems like it hasn't been as much of a race this year from what I've seen, but then again, maybe it is more like on Instagram and I just haven't seen it, but I don't know, maybe like T-Funk or something. I mean, that's who I want. I thought skating is pretty much like encapsulates the Bay area and, and like what Thrasher is about. But I mean, maybe I, it seems hard because he doesn't even have a shoe sponsor and it seems like it's kind of a political thing at this point with like sponsors and stuff, but I don't know. I mean, it's crazy that he doesn't have a shoe. Sponsor. Seems like, I'm sure Nigel's got something cooking up, right? Seems like he's always kind of throws something out crazy last minute. I think this next couple of weeks is just going to be. <laughs> yeah, just bombarded. But for right now, I'm saying my top three is T-Funk, uh, Tyshawn, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, Louis Lopez, who's like every year he's a top three contender. So For sure. Yeah. I mean, shit, they should just give it to Figgy. I mean, fuck, how many times did that dude yeah. get swept out from under him? I know, that's true too. I mean, Figgy is, you know, Figgy. And like, knows. he's like such a part of Thrasher. I, I couldn't believe he never got it, but I think at a certain point, it's like, he probably doesn't even care at this point, but hmm. I mean, T-Funk would be cool. I, I feel like, he doesn't just the way he's skating right now and everything it i wouldn't even care if he put another part out just everything he's doing on his board is just crazy just yeah. skating on like another level that gx video was like they're hitting the uh, top of mason rail and then bombing yeah. the hill and and the front side ollie over the long bench at china banks is that was like, insane it's like it's fuck. you haven't seen yeah that's when i saw the photo i thought I don't know what I thought, but I was just was like, all right, I just need to see the footage of this because this doesn't look right how uh, this front side all is happening on this bench. <laughs> and then it just was even crazier in the footage. I know, and he did it so good. Like it wasn't like anything crazy. Like yeah, that place he, is he hard. Took, he took like the hardest route too, because I I thought I saw people were skating over the rail into the bank. So I'm like, he must have dropped into the bank. 
right. and just had a shit ton of speed, but he just threw down, pushed a couple of times and just, I think that is just a testament to how good he is on his board and right now, especially. He's good at going fast and still doing things like ollieing off that curb bump to wall ride. It was like last year. Yeah. That was so gnarly. Like there's some shit where you're just like, there's not, people aren't doing that. Yeah. And I don't know. I think he just encapsulates like what Thrasher's about. I think it'd be cool if he got it. Yeah. Um, I Googled your name before I did this interview just to see what would come up. And there's a lot of talk about you and your new lady friend. Oh yeah. I'm sure there able, is. Are we able to talk about that at all? Uh, yeah, sure. I don't care. So how did, how did this all begin? Um, how did you meet? We met originally over the internet and just kind of chatted for a little bit. And then when we met up, we just got along really well. And then, yeah, just like any, I guess, relationship kind of starts, just started hanging out more and more and more. And then she, uh, now she lives like out in San Diego. We pretty much live together. Like I'm at her place most of the time. And Hmm. this house is kind of lived in by Jacob and my cousin, Justin. And yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's funny that people I guess are talking about it cause it's pretty normal. We're both just like really mellow people and don't really do much. We just kind of, you know, this, go on skate yeah. or I go on skate trips. She kind of does her thing with her friends and that's about it. We just lay low. This is the daughter of Kurt Cobain, Francis Bean Cobain. Mm -hmm. I'm the first thing I'm thinking about is cause me and your dad are about the same age. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking you bring her over for dinner and he turns into Chris Farley and starts asking all the Paul McCartney questions about <laughs> like, do you, well, well, he <laughs> like fan it out. Cause I mean, Nirvana was a big deal for our generation. It was totally. Huge. Yeah. He's, he's talked, they've talked about, like he said, like he's seen his, he saw him play like at a pretty early stage when they, before they got pretty popular. Yeah. And me so too. that's kind of cool. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like mutual connections through her dad and him and just like, just it's, you know, that world can get kind of small when you're dealing with people of that level, I guess. So, hmm. but uh, yeah, I think it, it was more like we just got along really well. Cause we both understood that lifestyle of growing up with that, like parent yeah. and what it's like. And yeah, to a certain extent, we just like, I, we both don't really try to be on the internet much or we don't care if people know or don't know, but I mean, people find out stuff. So. Yeah. Like, are you getting harassed at all? Like, is there TMZ cameras or whatever? No, I think no. because she also doesn't care about being in the public eye. And I think once that happens, like people just stop caring too. Huh. And like you know, like they don't even, what are they going to, I don't know. What are they going to catch her doing? Like, taking yeah. the trash out or something. It's, there's nothing really, right. nothing really going on, you know? So, okay. Have you met her mom? No, I have not actually. Yeah. You got to meet the, her. <laughs> um, yeah. They, I mean, they don't really talk too much these days. So, Oh really? Yeah. It's kind of one of those situations. So I'm not, okay. yeah. I'm like, well, if you want me to meet her, I will, but yeah, I'm, it's not my place to make that happen. Well, dude, Nothing but love for you. I'm super hyped that you took the time out. Um, this is your birthday present. I'm oh, giving you, you an episode on there my podcast. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, what what's what's the, what's the future hold? You you getting ready for the holidays? Like what what kind of goals you got for the next like year or so? Uh, some skating. Just keep skating, and I know I think Lakai's kind of firing up a video that. Right. was supposed to be smaller and now it's kind of grown and it seems like it's turning into more of a real video project. So that, and just keep, I just want to keep training too. just like, huh. like I said, yeah, just in there like five days a week, rolling, training, learning, getting better at something that is, you know, a new thing and fun. So just kind of doing that. How much weight have you gained? Have you bulked up? Uh, I think probably like, 15 or 20 pounds just from eating. And I, I started like doing a bit of like full body workout stuff with a buddy of mine. That's a personal trainer, like lifting and stuff. I talked to Neen too about some yeah. of it because I just wanted to get my body in better shape. And I could tell like things were just debilitating my elbows and my wrists and my knees. And 
I feel so much better now though, about a year in of just kind of like exercising regularly, lifting. And I just don't, I don't really give a shit if people think it's whack or not. Cause in this day and age, I'd, it's kind of like, it used to be that sort of thing where anything non skate like that was kind of, you know, kooky or whatever, but I mean, right. shit, I want to skate as long as I can and feel good. So are you taking any supplements or are you doing anything like glucosamine or anything like that? That's helping with your joints um, and different things. I do like the athletic greens. I drink uh -huh. that like every fucking podcast in the world is sponsored by it these days, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Does that stuff seem to be, yeah, it, just helps, it helps a lot with like, I've had in the past some kind of like stomach issues with like, you know, digestion or allergies and, it just helps with that, like the probiotics and stuff in there, I think kind of help my stomach be a little bit healthier. So yeah. that in turn makes everything a bit healthier. I'll tell you, like, I'm, I'm getting like a lot of arthritic in my shoulders and neck mm -hmm. and stuff. And I'm searching, like I talked to Neen for like an hour or two about all kinds of like stretching yeah. and different stretching. Yeah, he's huge. crazy knowledgeable. Yeah. I've been doing quite a bit of yoga too. Just trying mm -hmm. to just everything. I'm just like, I'll just do anything that's going to make me physically and mentally more kind of, you know, aware of what's going on in my body. Mm. Okay. Well, um, we always end with a song so you could pick any song to throw on the jukebox as we take it out of here. Hmm. Let's think, I'm trying to think of what, let's see, I'll look at whatever I was just listening to on Spotify. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, also I was going to ask you, um, good friend of the show uh miss galena mm -hmm. i think you know you got any good galena stories for me <laughs> uh i mean i'm sure i could think of some but yeah i'll spare her whatever one i could think of i don't know what it would be but no nothing like that she's she's awesome she's the best i gotta give a shout out because i know she'll probably be listening shout out yeah i was listening to uh cold cave which is like buddy in my dad's band uh the song we'll just play the song confetti it's like their biggest hit i guess okay yeah sounds good always like hearing i haven't heard that so i'll be stoked yeah, to cool. check it out you know that band american nightmare i've heard of them he was the singer of american nightmare and this is his other thing kind of like oh i don't know yeah he'll just listen to it see what you think are you so you're still into the like music's obviously a part of our life forever you're For just sure, not, yeah 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 so, just not playing it as actively i guess how do you uh discover bands like new new music to listen to through spotify or word of yeah mouth? through spotify i still buy a lot of records i'll just go in record store and buy records and check out new bands that put out a new record and just kind of like i don't you know pick, try to, pick out the album by the cover Sometimes if I don't know it and looks interesting yeah. and, or if I recognize a person's name from a different band that I like is in a certain band, I'll get it or just try to like support that side of music, the like tangible I love record store type vinyl, thing. man. That's forever. It's like the magazine. We got to keep it in print for sure. You, you got a good vinyl collection? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. They're actually over here. You can see I'll turn it for you. There they are. Oh, there you go. Yep. You got any uh, Sean Stewart in there? You got any Arctic? I have Arctic, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, dude, thanks again. I really appreciate you. Have a great holiday season and a birthday and all that. And hopefully I'll see you in real, like not on a monitor in real. Yeah, world. hopefully sooner than later. All right, dude. Take care of yourself. Keep ripping. Thanks, dude. See ya. Cheers. Later. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross 
by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.